The Dirty Bus Jeep Club is back on the trail. So, so come, come ride, ride with us. us. All right, good morning guys. The Dirty Bunch Jeep Club is back on the trail. We're here doing the Georgia Adventure Trail today. We just pulled, pulled out of Lake Park, Georgia and south, south part of Georgia. We're working our way up the Georgia Adventure Trail heading north and uh, we're gonna spend the next few days exploring the back roads, the dirt roads, the country roads of, uh, of Georgia. It's a beautiful drive. If you've not done the Georgia Adventure Trail before, we highly recommend it. This is just a... Uh, overlanding Georgia trip. This is not the Georgia Adventure Trail specific. We're going to be riding today a lot on the Georgia Adventure Trail, but we're not going to stick specifically to the Georgia Adventure Trail. We're going to meander off and do some other things. We are just in pure overlanding mode this weekend. We're going to camp out for several nights and just enjoy the back country of Georgia, the back roads, the dirt roads, the country roads. We'll go through some of the small towns. We'll, uh, <clears throat> we'll spend a night dispersed camping, a couple nights at a campground, and just go see a bunch of cool stuff, have time away from work, time away from this normal stress of life, and just spend some time with our friends and, um, and just enjoy it. Now, if you want to watch uh, the Georgia Adventure Trail specifically, we put out a video from uh, about this time last year that was a Georgia Adventure Trail video. And if you'd like to see what the Georgia Adventure Trail is specifically, you can watch that video and see uh, the entire thing from start to finish. Well, it feels good to be back on the road, guys. This is our first trip with the Dirty Bunch and, in a long, in a long time. And just a lot of things have been happening and um, sometimes it goes like that, but glad to be back and taking a ride like this with the Dirty Bunch Jeep Club. But we try to, to get an out of state trip at least twice a year. So this is the first one of 2024. Just a nice little weekend overlanding trip. Just really enjoy spending time out with our friends. <laughs> the uh you guys know what happened with valkyrie if you've not check out the uh, girls overlanding series episode five but since we lost valkyrie we've we've moved to uh this gladiator that we're calling heimdall we've only had it for a few weeks and uh we're in the process of building it out and trying it out and getting used to it and uh so last night was the first time we've put you know a good chunk of hours on the highway and the rear locker lights started flashing and coming on with dash lights and everything. And we're like, oh brother, what's going on? So when we stopped for gas, I said, well, I'll go ahead and engage the rear locker and then disengage it and maybe that'll just get it to go away. Oh no, no, no. That made it engage the rear locker, but then it wouldn't disengage. It just gave me that flashing light, the dreaded electric locker flashing light. There's always a little something that you've got to deal with when you take these adventures, right? Always something. So Boomer's joy in life is barking at the cows. Tell him, Boomer. <laughs> you know, when we started the Dirty Bunch Jeep Club, we started making videos. We'd uh, all say, the Dirty Bus Jeep Club is back on the trail. So, so come, come ride, ride with, with us. us. The idea was that when you go out onto the trails, it's it's best for you to take somebody with you. And our primary reason for that was safety reasons. I mean, you get out there, you, you need help, you need to get towed out, pulled out of a hole or whatever. Um, you know, it's always best to have people around with you. So come ride with us was always an invitation to come ride with the group instead of riding by yourself. But over time, it's really gotten to be one of those things where come ride with us means a whole lot more to us as a group because 
it's about the friendship and the camaraderie and the time that we have together on the trail a lot more than it is being there to help each other out when somebody breaks down. I mean, most rides, nobody needs any help, right? But you've always got that time where you're together and that's, uh, that's meaningful. bicycle stand up by itself. It was too tired. <laughs> Free firewood. I mean, look at all of these con trees. I mean, they're everywhere, but are they dead or are they just dormant? I don't know because, I mean, we came through here in January last year and they looked like this, and now we're in March and mid-March and they look like this, but I don't know. They look dead, dead, dead. There's like no buds or nothing on them. Right. Well, I don't know. If you know, please uh, put in the comments, are these, we, I, we don't know what the, dor the dormancy schedule is for pecan trees. You know, are they still dormant in, what is this, mid-March? Are they still dormant in mid-March? When do they come out of their dormancy? I mean, if you guys know, please put it in the comments. We'd love to know. Well, we're not supposed to have any rain today, but oh my goodness, the rain clouds are rolling in. It's really looking rainy everywhere you look. So uh, just looking at the weather app, now it's saying, yeah, weather's uh, changing. So I'm hoping that we're not gonna move ourselves into a rain camp situation tonight. I guess we'll find out. Well, we're here in Hawkinsville getting gas and um, Boy, you can see behind us, that's exactly where we're headed. Just about 10 miles that direction is where we're gonna be doing our dispersed camping tonight. And it's looking a little rough. I don't know if we're gonna end up being able to stay dry or not, but I sure hope we do. We're less than five miles out from camp. Looks like we're gonna be rolling in. We should be there no later than 4.15, 4.30. That's great, we can have everything set up and dinner cooking by probably five. And uh, all very good. Now, the weather's definitely changed. We've got rain that's rolled again. Uh, looks like we've got the chance for rain between now and about midnight. Hopefully we stay dry. Looks like it's up, up to about 50% chance. Get wet, we stay dry, who knows?
Well, we made it to camp and uh, we got in and got set up and just in time it started raining. It rained for, uh, I don't know, hour and a half, something like that. So we just piled up under the awning and um, rode it out, ate some dinner, cooked some dinner, ate some dinner. And uh, now it's lit up. So we're hoping that we can get a window here. It gives us a little bit just to have a chance to maybe sit around the fire and enjoy that for a while before it starts back up. So if we could just get a window of maybe an hour or two, that'd be fantastic. And uh, just have a little campfire time before we get to bed. That's all we need. Build a box around it and then frame it and then light that match light on fire. Yeah. I mean, it's, you're basically talking about a dinosaur. All the carrots. Uh, he's not going to stay with that all night. And then all day long, he's a puppy. And he's got... Good morning. We had our first night of camping here in Georgia last night. It was a, it was a nice night. Now, it rained pretty much uh, all evening and into the night until about, I don't know, one or two o'clock somewhere in there it just drizzled so everything we're putting up this morning is wet not a big deal we'll get in later on today get that opened up and aired out and it'll be just fine uh, today we're going to be heading more northeast and getting over towards that northeast corner of georgia if you guys are familiar with that area it's gorgeous uh, we'll be over in that area around watson mills bridge and um that's a fantastic area. We'll show you the video of that. But uh, today's drive throughout the day should be pretty easy. A lot of back roads, country roads. Again, we're just taking it easy. This is a low pressure trip. This is just about getting out and having a good time with your friends. Well, it was stormy and rainy last night, but it is clear and beautiful today. We've got some white fluffy clouds puffing around up there, but a lot of sunshine. This looks like a great day to do some overlanding in Georgia. Yeehaw! Well guys, we uh, came along an area here where they're doing some deforestation and they've stripped this road down to bare, bare mud and with the rains last night, it is a big sloppy mess. We're gonna have to separate the group, send um, Pete and Ed as a workaround and Paul and us are gonna continue on this road because we're already committed. But we're gonna have to go through here, but we're turning sideways and slopping and flinging mud everywhere. It's a real mess. That section back there, we were coming uphill and just trying to come along and get to where the hill began. We found uh, Heimdall just completely sideways in the road. We had to stop and put it in four-wheel drive. So Jeeps and four-wheel drive to get through this section, that was unexpected. This is not typical overlanding that uh, we were anticipating. Go driver, when you come up here because there's a hole. Yeehaw. Well, that was a completely unexpected section, guys. We came over a little hill. We'd been on a uh, combination. It'd be a little bit of blacktop, then a little bit of gravel, then a little bit of dirt, and just back and forth between those. And then we started into a little bit of mud. No big deal. And then it got slippery, and then it got sticky. And then the Jeep started sliding a little sideways. And we said, oh, man, we got to stop because... Uh, if Ed gets into this, his, he's got a very heavy rig, and 
to get off of this trail going forward, you've got to go up a pretty good hill, and he was going to have to make probably a thousand yard run up a, a, a decent pitch in that type of mud. Uh, his rig is heavy. It would take everything we got to try to get him out of that if he were to get stuck. So best to just uh, pack them around, have them go a different direction. So they headed east, and they're going to reconnect with one of the high, one of these state highways out here, and then come north and meet us. But we are covered oh, in man. mud, big, thick, red clay. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, well, we pulled over and let him catch up. Take a look at the Jeep. It's uh, got a little chunky here. Yeah. Cleaning it up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's going to take a little cleaning. All right, so it looks like we've got everybody. It took us about 30 minutes uh, from the point that we disconnected until we got reconnected. But uh, we're ready to hit the road, get back on the trail. Still sunny, great weather. Hopefully, the gray skies are gonna clear up. Put on a happy face. Put on a happy face. So guys, we made it into camp. We're here at the Watson Mill Bridge State Park here in Georgia. Uh, great campground. We love this one. It's just not even half a mile from the Watson Mill Bridge. We'll be over there checking that out in the morning before we head out. But I uh, got in here and got set up in our campsite tonight. Got some dinner going. Everybody's cooking up their different stuff. It's going to be a good night around the fire too. Ran into a little bit of a hiccup when we first got here. We got to our designated camp spot. There were already a couple guys that were in there, which was odd because, number one, it's a group campsite. It's intended for like 10 people, and there were two guys in it. Um, number two, they evidently double booked the place, and uh, so we were kind of on the outside looking in there because there was nobody here. There was no camp host. The offices were all closed. All the phone numbers that we called just said, hey, it's after hours. So we were just kind of out of luck. And then uh, we found a spot uh, that was open. We went ahead and reserved that. So we've paid for camping twice here, but at least we've got a spot and we're set up. We'll deal with, this, uh, with uh, the state park about that later on after the fact, but we're not gonna stress. It's not that big a deal. We've got a place to sleep. That's all that really matters, right? Tomorrow should be a good day. We're basically just gonna get up, check out the, the local area, and then we're gonna hit the road and get all the way back to Orlando. Should have some good, good clear weather tonight. Temperature down in the low 50s. That's perfect for camping in our book. And uh, so we're looking forward to another good night of camping. 
Right now it's time for some dinner and a few hours around the campfire. Pete, what you got cooking, buddy? Fajitas. Steak, steak, onions, peppers. That looks really good. Mm. Smells good too. <laughs> Easy to do. Perfect, perfect camp food. And fudge stripes for dessert. Well, no, you use the fudge stripes with the marshmallows, so you're cheating on your chocolate and your when you do your s'mores. Oh, that is awesome. So you got a cookie bottom, cookie top. And you use a use the fudge stripe cookies to make your s'mores. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. The voice of experience. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whoa, where was that thing? Hayden seven years ago. Oh. I thought I said Hayden seven days ago and I thought you were going to my camera world looking. I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> No, Don't it was look just seven, seven years ago. I was going to say, how'd you see that? <laughs> huh. Well, now I'm curious. My phone's dead. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good morning, guys. We're up and going this morning. We wanted to get down here to the Watson Mill Bridge, which is what the park's named after. Having to try to hustle a little bit this morning because the rain's coming in. But uh, if you come here, you can't miss the bridge. I mean, look at this. This is a really, really cool landmark. So if you're here, you definitely want to get a good look at this. It's a great place to get pictures. Obviously, it's a lot nicer if you can do it uh, when the sun's out. But even still, even with the overcast and everything, this is a, a great, great shot. This would make some really good black and white photos. We woke up this morning and we had a, uh, a news alert that the weather had changed overnight. And uh, while we were expecting, you know, Sunday morning, now all of a sudden we're expecting rain. So we had about, oh, less than an hour before the rain hit, fortunately for us. We've done this a few times. We were able to cook our breakfast, uh, do everything that we needed to do, get everything packed up and be rolling in less than an hour. Um, didn't used to be that way, but it is now. And uh, so now we're down over here. Now it's just sprinkling, probably no big deal, but uh, Glad that we were able to get up and going this morning before the rain hit.